Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you are not subscribed, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button to catch uh, content like this where I talk hockey, some jersey ranking stuff, uh, local rankings, and just, just general awesome fun. I, I try and stay pretty lighthearted on this channel, and uh, I would love it if you could join me. So even though I, most of my content, like I said, is lighthearted, this is more of a serious video, even though it could potentially lead to some awesome fun things. So I kind of just want to talk out loud a little bit and kind of give you some of my thoughts on the situation. Now, if you're not aware of the situation, the NHL is considering and even taking steps now to implement a 24-team playoffs. Um, it's not really a playoffs, I guess. It's a, There's like a preliminary round where teams on the bubble and just in the playoffs kind of play off against each other to kind of create round one and the top four teams get a bye, but those teams play off against each other, I believe, to figure out the one to four seeding. So it's 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 more complicated than that a little bit, but um, I, I uploaded a question or a poll onto the community tab on this YouTube channel, and you guys voted, you guys uh, commented, and the question was, what should the NHL do? And I gave four options. Those options were, I'm just gonna read it off my phone here. Uh, you know what, cancel everything, bring on the 2020-2021 season. So you know what, just screw the season, let's just wait to the next one. Uh, that got 11% of the votes. Option number two, I only want the traditional 16-team playoff format. So screw this 24-team thing, uh, screw canceling, like if we're gonna do it, let's do it the right way, 16 teams. That got 11%. Option number three, I am fine with the 24-team uh, playoff format, uh, made the best team win. That got 72% of the votes, and the last question or the last option was, I don't care about format, I just want to see Batman booed. And that got 7% of the votes, which made me happy that some of you <laughs> actually took the time to, uh, to vote for that one. Uh, 1,400 votes, actually, in, in that poll, so pretty cool. But obviously, you guys are okay with the 24-team playoff. Now, before I get into my reasoning and my thoughts, which I did have some of those in that question or in that post, uh, I want to read you some of the matchups and how this will work a little bit more in depth. And I'm going to put the, an image up on the screen so you can see it. Now, first of all, when I see this image, it is a bit confusing, but the thing that pisses me off the most about it is whoever made it put the east on the left and the west on the right. Like, oof, it's, it's difficult to look at. I don't like that. Well, let's start with the east on the left. So the play-in round has Toronto facing Columbus. In the next series, we have Pittsburgh versus Montreal, the Islanders versus uh, Florida, and then Carolina versus the Rangers. So these are the preliminary matchups to get into the first round. So I see some, <laughs> I see some concerns here. I see obvious, you know, there's a lot of question marks on some of these teams, like Montreal. I know I'm wearing Buffalo. I have a collection of, of every jersey here and every hat from every team. Montreal's my team, though. Um, Montreal should not be in the playoffs. Okay, there was I think a one percent chance that they should have that they could have made the playoffs this year. It wasn't going to happen. It just flat out was not going to happen. This gives them the opportunity to play in. My viewpoint on this entire thing has nothing to do with that. Okay, I'm happy that they're included in this 24 team matchup thing. But I can understand the argument of how that's not fair, and I kind of agree with that. At the same time, you have teams just on the outside, like a Buffalo or like a New Jersey, who, you know, let's use New Jersey for example. New Jersey has played really well near the end of the year. Uh, one more week of play, and Montreal and New Jersey could have really switched in this tournament. So, I think I think it's frustrating for Devils fans to, to see a team play so well at the end and not make it in. But if we flip-flop over to the West and we look at Arizona, for example, Arizona started the year pretty well and played pretty well the majority of the year, really up until kind of the Taylor Hall trade, and then things kind of dipped a little bit, and they're, you know, they've fallen way, way down. And that's also due to the, the uh, incredible, not maybe not incredible, that's a, an over-exaggeration, but the the good play of the teams around them to kind of leapfrog the Arizona Coyotes. So Arizona's included in here, and they haven't really played that well lately, and New Jersey has, and they are not included. So how is that fair? It's, I think it's fair because the way I just said it. It doesn't matter if you play well at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. At the, I say end of the year. I know it's not the end of the year. Until the lock, until the, you know, the break. 
it doesn't matter at what point of the that first 75 percent of the season um it's sorry there's someone like making noise above me just a second all right, so I don't know what the hell was going on up there. I could, you could probably see my mind wandering a little bit. I wasn't really even paying attention to what I was saying. I was listening to that crap. So anyways, I don't think it really matters at what point of the season you play well. Up to the break, if you don't have enough points to make it into this 24-team matchup system, whatever this is, then whatever. Like, you should have played better. That's that's what it comes down to, whether it was at the first of the year or the end of the year. I don't care. So I don't buy the argument that, you know, this is unfair. New Jersey should have been included. If, they, if it had it ended a week later, maybe. Maybe they would be in. Who cares? Let's just, you know what, this isn't perfect. That's kind of the point of it. It's not perfect. Now, if you look at the top four teams in the East, we've got Boston, Tampa, Washington, and Philadelphia. Now, from my understanding of this, these teams will face off against each other to figure out the one to four seeding, and then that will determine, as you can tell from this uh, bracket, where they will end up. So, for example, if Boston... And plays Tampa, Washington, and Philadelphia. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if they all play each other once uh, or twice. I don't really know. Um, but they will be playing each other at the same time that those playing rounds are happening. So hypothetically, we'll say Boston comes first. Um, and Toronto does beat Columbus and uh, moves on to the first round. That means that Toronto would face Boston. And that's, that's a matchup that... Is getting a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, I think Toronto fans are a little, maybe a little bit nervous because Boston has history on their side. But there's a lot of possibilities of matchups here. It could basically, in, in in the first round, any team could almost play any team in a way. <laughs> no, I obviously, if Toronto wins and Montreal wins, they're not going to play in the first round. However, if I understand this correctly, they could potentially play in the second round, which would make sense. I guess if the cards had have aligned in a normal year, they could have played each other in the second round. So even though this is different, it still has shades of being proper. On the West, uh, St. Louis, uh, Colorado, Vegas, and Dallas are the top four seeding there. And then on the in the play-in round, you have Calgary versus Winnipeg, Edmonton versus Chicago, Vancouver versus Minnesota, and Nashville versus Arizona. Those are all some interesting matchups. We'll talk a little bit about those in, in, in just a couple of minutes. But again, some really interesting matchups that could take place there. You're, we're not going to see a Boston versus Tampa in the first round. We're not going to see a St. Louis versus uh, Colorado in the first round, which is which is great. I think I think part of the problem with, that people have is that we see too many good teams go out in the first round. This fi- this helps a little bit, but it still holds the problem in the second round. Um, Boston could play whoever, and Tampa could play whoever, and then they could still meet in the second round, and those are two amazing teams going against each other. Teams that maybe should meet in the conference finals. That's nothing to take away from Washington or Philadelphia, um, but I think, I think you could make that argument very easily that Boston and Tampa are the two strongest teams uh, in the East. So this isn't a perfect system by any means, but let's go through every series and maybe give a little bit of prediction, uh, a, a meaningless, uneducated prediction from myself. So the first round uh, in the East, Toronto versus Columbus. Columbus is, has faced injuries all year, and they've still managed somehow to be extremely competitive. Maybe not as competitive as they would be if they didn't have those injuries, but I mean, you have to give them all the props in the world. Toronto is one of the most offensively gifted teams in in the entire NHL. Uh, they struggle on defense. Obviously, that's you know we could talk about that in an entire video itself. But this is a tough one because there's depth on Columbus and there's not really any depth on Toronto. So do you go with depth or do you go with skill? I tend to go with depth in most in, in most situations. However, here I think Toronto is a little hungry. Uh, I don't think I, I think they don't want to be embarrassed uh, again by whatever team they play. So I think Toronto would really come out uh, smashing, and I believe that they would move on to, they would move into the uh, the first round. Pittsburgh and Montreal, uh, both teams have had interesting years, ups and downs. Uh, you have to respect a healthy carry price and a, and a rested carry price. I, I think he has the potential to probably go pretty deep in the playoffs and carry a team, but I don't see that happening here. I think Pittsburgh 
will be victorious in this matchup if it happens. I think it'll be a long series, though, probably six or seven games. And that's another de detail we don't know. We don't know if these matchups or this playing round is going to be a best of three, a best of five, a best of seven. We, we don't know anything at this point. We can only speculate. Let's just, for this video, let's just assume that it's going to be a, a seven-game series. Next one is uh, the Islanders in Florida. That was an awesome matchup a couple of years ago. One of the best series I've ever watched. I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't have a dog in the fight. It, just as a hockey fan, it was a really good series to watch. I kind of feel like that again in, in this series, if it were to happen. Um, I, I really thought Florida would do better this year than they, they have been. Bobrovsky is, mm, you know, having his struggles. The Islanders, uh, they kind of underperformed a little bit and struggled near the end of the year. Uh... If this goes seven games, or six or seven games, I think the Islanders probably win it. Um, but I believe, you know, if, if Florida can really come out for those first four games or first four or five games really, really strong, and I think they will, um, I think they will beat the Islanders. So I'm going to pick Florida there. New York Rangers, Carolina. Tough. Tough one. Really tough one. Carolina, deep team, skilled team. Um, Rangers changed a lot in the past couple of years specifically in the last 12 months and uh it's a scary team it's a really scary team and they were starting to play some some impressive hockey this year and i think i think they're the underdog i i, I don't think that's an unpopular opinion i think that would be the popular opinion that they are the underdog in this series and i think they could beat the carolina hurricanes so i i would i will uh i would be cheering for carolina but i do believe that the rangers will beat carolina so let's move those over Boston, um, Tampa, Washington, and Philadelphia. We don't know who they're going to play in the, in the first round, so let's just leave that. We won't talk about that. Move over to the West. Uh, Calgary and Winnipeg. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one for me. Uh, Hellebuck has been playing pretty well this year, better than last year for sure. Not as good as the year before that, in my opinion. Calgary is, you know, they're coming off that, I don't want to say embarrassing loss last year, but it was slightly embarrassing to Colorado. I think... I don't know. It's so close. I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even want to make a prediction for this series. I'm going to go with Winnipeg. I, I think that. I think the the depth scoring on Winnipeg will sink the Flames. Um, next matchup: Oilers in Chicago. It's it's hard to ignore the skill on on Edmonton. There's so many factors about Edmonton you could talk about, but the two biggest ones, obviously, Drysaddle and McDavid. Uh, you can't ignore them. But you know, Chicago's been playing pretty well this year. It, relatively compared to the last couple of, of years. I actually think that Chicago probably would beat Edmonton in the, in this matchup or in this well, seven games or whatever. I think they could probably do it in six, maybe seven. It would be a good series. It would be a really interesting series. Those teams haven't played each other in the playoffs, to my knowledge, in a very long time, maybe if ever. Uh, next series, Vancouver and Minnesota. Tough one for me. Uh, uh, I want to choose Vancouver, and I think ultimately Vancouver probably could pull off a series against Minnesota, but I would not be surprised at all if Minnesota won that one. The last series, Nashville and Arizona. I think due to the struggles of Arizona late in the season, I think their mind is not out of it, but I just don't think that they're totally in it. Nashville was actually playing really, really good hockey near the end of the year, and I think that that momentum is probably still there. So I'm going to choose Nashville um, for that one. So just a couple little predictions. So at the end of the day, is this the right decision? Are we making the right decision to go to a 24-team playoff uh, matchup or ma bracket, whatever you want to call this? I don't care. 16 is the tradition. I would consider myself to be a traditionalist, and when I, when I think Jason and I talked about this months ago because it was speculate, it was speculation back then of different things that they could do. I wasn't a fan of this at all. I'm, I would, like I said, I would consider myself a traditionalist. So at the time, I really didn't want this to go through. But if I step back and look at this objectively and take away all of my emotion from it and try not to be a traditionalist, what's the main reason of the playoffs? Why do we all watch the playoffs other than to watch our favorite teams uh, play? It's to watch the best team win. So at the end of the day, objectively, I don't think it matters if there's 16 teams 24 teams or 31 teams this is not the perfect situation no one could have predicted the coronavirus the COVID-19 uh, to have this impact uh, this you know abruptly I guess is the word uh, 
the NA, the NBA when they canceled their season it really shocked me. I can't believe it happened that soon. So this cancellation was pretty abrupt. This isn't a perfect system. But when I stand back and I look at all this and I think about the best team winning, I don't think it matters if there's 16 teams. I don't think it matters if there's 24 teams. At the end of the day, the best team is still going to win. Now you might have, if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, or look, let's, let's say, um, hmm, let's say you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Pittsburgh was going to make the playoffs. Montreal was not. If Montreal beats Pittsburgh, I can understand how the Penguins fan would be like, this is absolute garbage. Like, how, how now we're out because a, a team that never should have been in the playoffs came in and, and eliminated us in a silly buy-in tournament or a, a play-in round. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, this, is, this doesn't count. But I say to you, not as a Montreal Canadiens fan, as a general hockey fan, I just used the Montreal-Pittsburgh series as an example. There's all kinds of examples on here. But I say to you, what's it matter? What team you play if you can't win? If your team isn't good enough to win, then they shouldn't deserve to go deep in the playoffs regardless. They shouldn't go deserve to go on to the next round. I don't care if this is a traditional year. Tampa Bay, did they... You know, they went out in the first round. Does that year not count? Because they were the best team in the entire NHL, and they absolutely just, you know, set records and did all this stuff, but they went out in the first round. That wasn't supposed to happen. Well, I guess this year doesn't count. Like, the best team still won last year. That's the point. That's the entire point of the playoffs, is that the best team wins. And I think that's why the poll that I put out had the most popular vote. I think it was, was it, did I say 72 at the beginning of the 72 or 77 at the beginning of the video, yeah. So that is the popular opinion. Like, the best team, let's, let's just watch the best team win. So if you look back at, I think in 2012, the LA Kings got in at eighth and went all the way, won the cup. 2016, 2017, uh, Nashville got in, swept Chicago, went all the way to the cup. Uh, there's other examples of that as, as well. So... Why is that any different than this? In, like, just, I know 16 is different than 24, but why is that any different than this? Nashville wasn't predicted to go to the finals. LA wasn't predicted to go to the finals. You think Montreal or Chicago, well, take Chicago, for example, you think Chicago was predicted to go to the finals, but if they get in and they defeat Edmonton and they go on and they defeat the next person, and they make it all the way, even if they don't win the Stanley Cup, if they make it all the way to the finals and maybe lose or win, it doesn't matter. Is this year any less valuable? Why should it be less valuable? The best team's going to win regardless. You can't be, in my, in my personal opinion, you can't be upset if a team beats your team. Your team wasn't good enough. And I'm like, that could be, if, if the situation was reversed and, you know, say I'm a Chicago fan and Chicago was 5th, and Edmonton was 12th, and Edmonton beat Chicago. Yeah, it would suck, but I mean, at the end of the day, the best team wins. So that's all I really care about. And the NHL, if you want to look at this from a completely different perspective, I mean, this video could literally be two hours long. But if you look at this from a different perspective, the NHL wants to bring the, the playoffs back, or hockey back, to finish this season. They want hockey back. But... That is not the only driving factor. You have to think about money. Why does the NHL want there to be a 24-team bracket and include a Chicago or include a Montreal that really, honestly, shouldn't be there? Money. How, do, how does the NHL make money? Sponsorships. Sponsorships pay for advertising on the boards. They pay for advertising in, uh, you know, commercials. It, it's everywhere on Zambonis, um, on like news broadcasts. This power play was brought to you by Geico. Like it's everywhere. And if you take 16 teams and 16 fan bases, and then boom, oh, you obviously, or uh, all of a sudden you're up to 24 fan bases. Think about all the eyes, all the extra eyes you're going to have on this tournament or on this play in first round or whatever that you want to call this it's a lot of people and a lot of people with a lot of eyes watching a lot of commercials means dollar bills for the nhl 
So they can, you know, they can flex all they want about, you know, let's get hockey back. This That's all that matters. This is at least 49% a financial decision by the NHL. And I understand it. The NHL, even though it's a sport, even though it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a business. Its focus is fun. Its focus is to entertain, but it is a business at the end of the day. And a, their business is making billions of dollars. And the easiest way to do that is merchandise sales, sponsorships, and the ticket sales, I guess you could say, but there's not going to be any ticket sales here. So there's a huge motivation for money behind this, whether it's Sportsnet, F- Nesson, Fox. I don't even know Fox shows hockey anymore. Uh, like, there's a lot of potential here to make money. And I understand it because a lot of companies and a lot of uh, businesses have lost a lot of money, specifically the NHL, have lost a ton of money uh, because, you know, you're not selling tickets, there's no games going on, there's, that's, you're t- we're talking millions of dollars. That's a pretty big chunk of the, of the pocket. So I, I respect the NHL wanting to recoup some of those costs but I think you're definitely going to piss off a lot of fans bringing it from 16 to 24. I understand that argument. I was on that argument side a while ago. But I think if you take the emotion out of it, and if you are that person that's, that is maybe a bit of a traditionalist like I am, if you take the emotion out of it, and you just honestly just sit back and think about it as a hockey fan first, not a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, not a Carolina Hurricanes fan, whatever, just as a general hockey fan, it kind of makes sense because the best team is still going to win. Now, as of as I'm filming this, uh, this has gone to vote, I think, to the teams. And I think there was only two negative votes, Carolina and Tampa Bay. I think those were the only two teams that voted no to this. So there's going to be an announcement soon. Maybe by the time this video releases, it's already been made. Um, but regardless, this looks like it's going to happen. So why would those two teams vote no? There's a, there's a ton of reasons. Maybe Carolina doesn't want to play the Rangers because they know that the Rangers could probably do some damage. Everything I've said in this video all stops or it doesn't is it completely meaningless if one thing happens. And one big thing is going to happen in these playoffs. It doesn't matter if it's in the playing round. It doesn't matter if it's in the first round or the Stanley Cup Finals. A big thing always happens in the playoffs. A massive hit that, that causes controversy. An unbelievable comeback. An incredible highlight reel goal that we'll watch for years to come. That's going to happen at some point. But there's something bigger that could happen. If a player gets COVID-19, instant stop. This all goes away instantly. It doesn't matter if it's in the playing round or the Stanley Cup final. They're almost certainly just going to stop it and scrap the entire thing. So there's a lot of risk here. And it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough decision to make. It's a tough format to navigate and to, you know, there's a lot of, Things they need to figure out. What country we're going to have it in? Are we going to have it in multiple countries? Mont- uh, Montreal, <laughs> Canada, and United States. Um, that causes border issues. So, okay, let's say we'll have it in, in a specific one country. Let's choose Canada. We'll use Edmonton because I think Edmonton is really making a push to be the hub city. So all the hockey's played in Edmonton. Okay, well, all the international or, or all non-Canadians enter Canada. When they do, do they have to quarantine for 14 days? Um if they do, and after 14 days, how often are they tested? Are they tested every day? Are they tested multiple times a day? How what's that, you know how long is tr- training camp, or how how much time do they have to get back in shape? Um, do they get practice games or exhibition games before the playing round and the the one to four seating round? There's so many little questions surrounding this. Uh, it's it's a really complicated. It's like Inception. You, like there's different there's just layers of this that you kind of need to figure out and there's problems at every single layer and i i you know it's it was it's not an easy job being the nhlpa right now or the nhl or you know gary benton i i'm harsh on him i give him a lot of criticism we make fun of him but i can't imagine how difficult his job would be at the time trying to please all of 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 the teams players and more specifically the owners now from a player's perspective do they get a vote? Do they actually, like, if you're a Victor Hedman and you don't want to play, I'm not saying that he said that. I don't know. I don't know his opinion. I don't, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using him as an example. If you're Victor Hedman and you don't want to play, but your team is in the playoffs and is going to play in the, fir- in the one to four seating 
uh, matchups, do you have the option to not play? Or do you have to play? You signed a contract. You have to play. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know the penalties. I don't know what rights the players have. I think we'll learn a lot more about that in the next coming days and weeks. Uh, hopefully we get an announcement uh, a little bit soon. So I know this video wasn't put together very well. It's just kind of me talking out loud, rambling. Um, but it, it was therapeutic to me because I could kind of talk out loud and just figure out stuff in my head as I do it. And I'm hoping that maybe some, some people share the same opinion as me. And if you don't, that's completely fine. I'm not saying uh, that you sh should agree with me. You should have your own opinion is what you should have, whether that's agreeing with me or not agreeing with me. Um, there is no really right or wrong answer here because this is a situation that literally none of us has ever been in before. Whether it's, it's me, a, a pleb at home, a fan watching hockey, or a player or an owner, Gary Bettman himself. We've never been in this situation before. So, uh, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's let's see what happens. Um, I really genuinely thought that hockey would be over for the year, so I'm already um, surprised a little bit in a, in, in a positive way. So I've I've already kind of won, even that they're talking about this and it looks like it's going to go through. It's kind of a it's kind of a win. Um, for, for all of us, really, as hockey fans. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, this isn't... I, I try and save most of my serious hockey talk for the podcast, which we do every single Sunday on the Post Post Podcast YouTube channel. Subscribe if you're not. And uh, it's linked down below in the description. So I try and save... I don't really make a lot of individual videos on this channel anymore, specifically talking about issues or problems with the NHL. Um, I save that for the podcast. So I, I hope that you're okay with me you know, taking a step back from the lighthearted stuff like the local rankings and the jersey rankings and, you know, the fun stuff, the lighthearted stuff, and doing this series video. I hope you're okay with that. So uh, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your viewership. If you're not subscribed, like I said at the beginning, I hope you can hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button down below as well. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for the conversation. Adios.